Hey everybody, Technivorous here, and I am back with another version of Kira. This is Kira 5.7. We're going to go ahead and take a look at what's new, and they do have something that is a pretty cool feature added in. We'll take a look at that in just a second, but before we get into it, make sure you reduce your Z offset on that subscribe button and give that notification bell a good first layer squish so you can get notified every time we put up a new video. That being said, we're going to jump right into it here, and as you can see, in the what's new section they have this and this is what i was talking about now this may not seem like much but it's actually going to come in really handy for things like uh sending models that you've already pre-prepared to each other or your friends or you know uh to other machines so this is basically a way to export using what is known as the new universal kira project and what it does is it takes your model its positioning data all of your slicing data everything that you've entered in and as you can see here they've added a support blocker to the mouth and it's going to take everything on the build plate and it's going to make one single file that you can take and move to another version of kira on another machine which means that you can get the perfect print settings by dialing this in and then you can share that exact kira project with everybody so um, no more struggling to find out what somebody else did to get their print to work or get the right amount of support or any of that business. Once it's good to go, you can actually just upload the Kira project into your Kira and roll with it. So that's a feature we're going to check out in a video all on its own here pretty soon. Um, right now though, let's move on to the next thing on the list. This is cloud printing and new materials. This is specifically for method series printers. So these printers have... Uh, new materials added that are ASA, SR30, and Nylon 12. Those are basically manufacturing materials, and this is more of a for a professional setting, and we kind of specialize in the hobbyist desktop area here. So we're kind of going to glaze over this, but it's nice to see them adding new stuff all the time. And you have the automatic failed slicing analysis. Now, Kira is really good about... Uh, getting feedback they're always putting out betas and sometimes even alpha versions to find bugs and things like that but they can't catch them all because they can't run their software on every machine everywhere and make sure it works with everybody's stuff so in order to stop people from having the issue where once in a while you download a version of Kira and it just doesn't work or throws errors they have pretty much made an automatic reporting tool so when your slice fails it'll give you a little bit more information about what happened as well as send a report to them so they can figure out what the problem was and hopefully prevent that problem from happening in the future with future updates. So uh, I like seeing this kind of stuff. This is one of the reasons that Kira is so great. They take feedback from the community really well. And um, we're going to move on to the final point here. And this is, as many of you know, Thingiverse is now Ultimaker Thingiverse, and it's owned by the same people that make Kira. So they're developing some integrations here. There has been for a while now a plugin on the marketplace called Thingy Browser that allows you to find Thingiverse models right from in Kira. This actually is a different beast here. Basically, it'll let you open stuff right from the web page to Kira. And the way you're going to do that is I already have Thingiverse brought up here. And you can see I selected an item. Let me just go back. I'll show you this process from the beginning here because it, it, it was pretty simple. But So basically you're going to pick a model. I was looking at this marble machine model. And in here you're going to click on files. And if you scroll down, you'll see that it has this little C button here to automatically add it to Kira. And then it's going to ask me if I want to allow it to open it. Yeah, I'll let it to open it. And there it is. We had to close the new menu there, but it pops up right in there. So let's try that again without anything in the way. Just one more time to make sure that uh, it's a pretty smooth trip. So opening Kira. And after already clicking the prompts and allowing it before, it's automatically in Kira. Let's see if we can do multiple models at a time here. And there it is. It pops it in. So um, pretty cool. Uh, always happy to see new updates in Kira. And I'm anxious to see and play around with that tool for making the Kira files uh, and see what 
that can result in transferring stuff from printer to printer because I think it's going to make things a lot easier to share, especially if you're one of those people that has a hard time finding out how to put in support blockers. If you can download the model with things already included like that, that would be pretty cool. So um, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Short and sweet. I will try to stay a little bit more up to date on the Kira versions. I was slacking on this one a little bit. We missed 5.6, but... Uh, you know, uh, we're coming back around. We're going to be trying to do a lot more videos. I have some pretty cool ones coming up. So stay tuned and we will see you in the next one.